Christians. And it is a Sunday morning, 5.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. We are in day two of our fasting, a 40-day fast. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Hope everybody's doing well. It is a Sunday morning. Uh, we are in the sixth uh, month of the year, June uh, 2nd. And so we thank God for all that he's doing. Good to see everybody come on. And we're going to be doing some fasting and prayer um, this morning, moving into the fast. So many of you, you've already moved into your fast because you're our uh, behind me or ahead of me. So it's already 6.30 many of your time. Good to see you, Sister Jan. Sister Brown, God bless you. Thank you for all that you do. And so I got, I want to go over the um, 12 things that God gave us uh, yesterday during the, during the fast. We are doing a spiritual diary or we're taking notes of the things that God uh, has downloaded in our spirit during this fast. Uh, we want to learn and grow. It's not just about not eating, but it's having a real communication with God and uh, connecting with God at a greater level. So good to see everybody, Sister Hubbard, Brother Michael, how you do, I hope you're doing well. Let me know how you're doing. I know this is your first time fasting, so let me know how well that you do did yesterday. I want to keep um, track with you and walk with you through this. And anyone else, if this is your first time fasting, uh, just inbox me, me or my wife, and let me know how you're doing and the different things that you are experiencing uh, doing this fast. Good to see you, my brother Demetrius. God bless everybody, Sister Bridges. So we're going to go and um, I'm going to go over these 12 points quickly and then we're going to go into prayer. And God is, has been showing me a lot. Now, these 12 notes are for yesterday's. OK, and this is the revelation that God has given me uh, for yesterday. Now, some of the things that you may have learned from your fasting are not on these notes. Um, once we're done, we'll try to gather. So just take notes of what God is saying to you. This is what God is saying to me and my wife and uh, has revealed to us because we're one and, and I'm sharing this with the body of Christ. Uh, let me say this way. F Father, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for how you're moving in this fast. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to enter into this place. Bless us and let us have an open mind to receive you at a greater level. God, bring us to a place that we are changing and we thank you. Amen. So uh, let me go over these things. Go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. And uh, today is Sunday, so I know many of you uh, may be in church at 1130 when we're coming off the fast. Remember, we're fasting from 6 a.m. to 12 noon for the first seven days. And then the, the remainder of the 33 days will be fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. OK, and so I'm going to walk with you through that fast every day, morning and evening, if the Lord say the same. And to give you a lot of instructions and clarity um, to show you. What's the results of prayer? There are things that should come out of fasting and prayer. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The least part of fasting and prayer is not eating. It's the least part. We have made it the most difficult part, but it's the least part. There's so many things that come from fasting and prayer that we should take hold to. And so let me share those things with you. Uh, yesterday, the first thing that God gave us was we're being seasoned for the season. We're being seasoned for the season. That's point number one. Okay. And, and as I begin to say these things, the Holy Spirit is going to bring these things more alive in your spirit. Okay. But you're being seasoned for the season. Point number two, when you agree, you will see. There are things that you need to say yes to before God gives you the full instructions. There are things that God wants to bring to pass in your life. But you have to understand, you have to agree in order to see. And so that's something that God shared with us yesterday. Good to see you, Prophet Charmaine. God bless you. So agree before you will see. Quit asking God to show you before you move. Move and then you'll, and you'll see. So when you agree with God, his plans, okay, you agree. Leave your family, your mother, your brother, your sisters, everybody. Go to a land that I will show you. Then you will see. Agree and you will see. That's point number two. We're going over uh, the 12 points that God gave us yesterday from fasting. Point number three, hearing God's frustration. This is something that I really heard yesterday while I was fasting and praying at work. And God was sharing with me um, his frustration, the heart of God. The more you spend time with God, the more you hear his heart. Uh, I post a couple things yesterday. I talked about when you're a prophet, you don't have a choice to, to keep your eyes open. You have to be your seer. That, so that's it. But also spending time with God. 
you begin to hear. And I begin to hear the frustration of, of God's feelings towards the church yesterday. And one of the things he shared with me, he said that there are too many, my sons, and it is exactly what he said. My sons and daughters are arguing over the, the literal word, but they're not even spending intimate time with me to know what I'm saying about the word. And so he was telling me that he's upset with leadership that are discussing the Bible and trying to prove what is right and what is wrong when these same people are not on their face with a radical praise and worship to be intimate with God. They have they have fell in love with the truth of the Bible, but not fell in love with an intimate place with God. And he said, these are my sons and my daughters, but they argued over who's right and wrong instead of coming to me and spending time with the Father. And so I begin to hear the frustration of, of the Lord from fasting and prayer. And the more you do that, the more God will reveal to you um, how he feels. And this is not to criticize. This is to bring a, a improvement. Truth is to bring freedom. Truth sets you free. So anytime God shows you truth about someone, if you're not in, in that truth to bring them to a better place, then you use that truth for the wrong reason. Okay, and so it's to bring us into a place of freedom. So that was point number three. Point number four, blocking the door of prayer. And I'm going to talk a lot about this today is that when we pray, the hardest thing about fasting is staying focused. It's not allowing thoughts to show up in your mind. And many people, we don't know how to stay focused. You don't know how to, how to block the door of prayer. He says, when you pray, go into your closet and shut the door. There are things that try to rob you of that intimate place with God. Interruptions, phone calls. You're thinking about what happened at the ball game 20 years ago. No, this is an intimate time with God. Shut the door. This is no interruptions. And so God began to show, share that with me. And even myself, he was saying, get that thought out. Okay, you just left me. You were talking to me all of a sudden now. You, you're talking to somebody else. You're thinking about something else. And so that was point number four, blocking the door of prayer. And that's a very key point in prayer. Point number five, being one with the body. God, the more you spend time in fasting and prayer, you hear what God is saying from a corporate perspective and not an individual perspective. He's speaking to the body of Christ, not just to you. And so the things that God is going to share with you that you're going to hear across the world because you're hearing it now from a member of the body, that he's speaking to the body. And so there'll be a lot of confirmations of what God is saying. And you hear it across the country. That's what God said to me. Well, God just didn't say that to you. He said to the body. And that unifies us as the body because the more we spend time with God, the more we hear the same thing of what God is doing and we align ourselves up with that. So that's point number five. Point number six is stillness. That prayer requires a stillness. And many times you have not grown in God because you can't stay still. Be still and see the salvation. Quit being so anxious to cross the Red Sea. Be still. Be, be under my guide. Don't allow things to chase you to another place. Be transitioned by the movement of God. Learn to be still. And this is another challenge in, in fasting and prayer because we don't know how to be still. Most time we can't even, there are people who can't even go to sleep unless the TV is on. You don't know how to be quiet and be still. Take off the noise. Learn how to be intimate with God. Quit always having that you have to talk. Sometimes you're under so much pressure that you always have to be doing something or saying something. You don't know how to be still. And so God wants to share some things with you, but you have to learn to be still. That's point number six. Point number seven, you have to rebuke the visitors. These are thoughts in your mind that show up. Unlawful roommates, okay? You're thinking about the wrong thing. You're being in captivity with the wrong thing. And so you have to stop the visitors. And visitors show up, even in our house a lot of times, Right when me and my wife want to spend some time together or watch a movie or whatever the case may be, ding dong, the bell is ringing. And so you have to stop the visitors because this is a, this time belongs to God. And I'm going to talk about that because that's something God shared with me today while I was in prayer about that. So that's point number seven, the, the unlawful roommates in your mind, visitors, they have to be put out. This is God's time. You fasting. This belongs to God. It belongs to no one else. Uh, point number eight, and this is what he showed me uh, last night. Or even while my wife was praying this e yesterday evening, he said, oh, you should be so much farther. I felt I felt convicted yesterday when she was praying because even though we're on a 40 day fast and we're fasting from 6 a.m. Um, to, to 12 noon for the seven days and then from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., I should be so much farther in my fasting life. The more you fast, God is going to share with you where you've been lacking. The things that has been robbing you 
from him, the things that has been interrupting you uh, from where you should be. And I said, Lord, I, I can't remember the last time I was on a real solid three-day fast with no food, no nothing. I should be father. And so there's so much I should be father in so many areas of my life. And God will get to re reveal that. And that's what that's that's the good thing about fasting. It's going to show you that this ain't about your husband bringing this up and your wife bringing this up. God is going to bring some things up that says, I love you and I thank you. And it's good that you are where you are, but you know you should be farther than this. And I felt that they were, we should be so much farther in where we are. Okay. And so that was point number eight. Point number nine, my wife talked about. Uh, she was praying for me and covering for me, and she was saying, hide him. Psalms 91 talks about, you know, hiding in the shadow, or, 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 or we hiding in the secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the, of the Almighty. And I was studying that this morning, and, and when she said that, it hit me. And God says, you have to know where my secret place is. Where is the secret place? And there are many answers to that, but that secret place is where you find his protection. And there's a secret place. And we want to be in that secret place. Okay? And so that secret place, some people say secret place is love. And wherever you're not in love, you're not, un you're not under divine protection. Some people say that the secret place is the house of God. Let God reveal to you, but we have to stay in the secret place. There's a secret place. And in that place is where we see his wings covering us. And so that's point number nine that we hide in Psalms 91, in the secret place of the Most High. The first time the word Most High is mentioned is when Abraham gave tithes. And he said, the, the God of the Most High. That's the first time that it's mentioned. So begin to study that and see what God is sharing with you, where the secret place is. Some people have secret places in their coats, the secret place in their house. Where's the secret place? Okay, very key. Uh, number 10, God, I feel the anointing this morning, is speaking tongues. My wife. As she began to pray, she could barely pray in English yesterday. And God says, we're speaking mysteries. That fasting and prayer should lead you into a greater level of your of your of your language, of of, of the what the Bible calls the heavenly language. And, and you begin to speak mysteries. Now, as you begin to speak mysteries, you want to ask God for interpretation. You don't want to experience these things in fasting and prayer, and then you don't understand what they mean. You are speaking mysteries, but our job is to understand mystery. He said unto you, I have given mysteries to know certain things. And so there will be a language, there will be a cry. Your, your moan may, may change in fasting and prayer. Uh, you may have a cry. These are mysteries that must be spoken, and you, and you ask God for interpretation of those. Okay, um, point number 11 is is the praying on her face during the fasting and prayer, separate, find yourself a room somewhere during these six hours or 12 hours, find yourself a room and get on your face, literally prostrate yourself, position yourself to hear from the Lord, get on your face. And I heard that we have to get on our face. There's not enough praying on our face, even in our churches, there's not enough praying on your face, even uh, at your home. There's not enough praying on your face. Okay, laying down. And then the last one she talked about in prayer is restoring our joy, a restoration of joy. And I really feel that because a lot of uh, us who are fasting, you have been robbed, you have been broken, you have been wounded. But God is restoring your joy. You're going to laugh again. You're going to enjoy life again. You're going to see life from a different perspective. God is restoring your joy. And those were the 12 points that God gave us yesterday while we were in fasting, okay? And so my wife has written those down. I'm not gonna spend that much time on them. We have 16 minutes left before we begin our fast this morning. And so we're gonna move into that. Uh, what, let me give you two more. For today, what God gave me today, and I, I get up I get up praying and fasting. So even though the fast started at six, I don't eat like prior to six and then now I start my fasting. Uh, my fast really start when I lay, lay down at night because I'm not going to eat to the following day of 12 noon. But this morning in prayer, God, these were, these are the points that God gave me for today. So these are notes for point for day two. Day two, this is what God said to me this morning. He says, stop cheating me out of my time and my position. Stop cheating me out of my time and my position. He really was letting me know that if this time is dedicated towards fasting and prayer, then give me what belongs to mine. Don't put my name on it but you're cheating me out of it. When I'm calling you to a place, come to a place, okay? So day two, and, and, and the more we fast and pray, 
God is going to begin to really tell you how he feel. He may tell you how he feel about the church, but trust me, he's going to come to you as an individual and tell you, stop cheating. Then he said, my position. And what he meant by that, he let me know. He said, there are things that I was supposed to do for you, but you trusted somebody else to do. He said, there are things that I was supposed to fulfill for you, but you trusted somebody else. Quit allowing other people to become God in your life. That's my position. That's my position. It's my position to be your lover. It's my position to be your father. It's my position to be your be your provider. He said, stop cheating me out of my time and you cheated me out of my position. You still looking for something, somebody else to give you what I'm supposed to give you, but you don't want to lean on me and depend on me and wait on me. That's what he gave me for day two. Point number one for day two, stop cheating God out of his time and his position. Point three, Fasting and prayer is more about freeing and developing than it is about not eating food. He says, get rid of this concept. Yes, I, yes, we're fasting from food. He says, but if you're not letting me develop you and free you from bondages, then you miss the reason why you missed the meal. I'm breaking bondages off your life. I'm developing you. So do not think this is about, I don't want you to eat a sandwich. It's not about putting away dinner. This is about making time for me so that I can free you from bondages and cycles and develop you to become who you need to become, okay? So this is what it's all about. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. First, God, we honor you. Before we ask you for anything, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your, your anointing. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that we can hear your voice. Speak to us, Father. We, we become silent before you and we become still to hear what you have to say. We can't start out the conversation. We have to let you talk. Allow you to speak to us. If we have anything to say, it's just an attitude of gratitude to be in your presence. God, we understand the all that it is to be in the presence of a king or a queen. To be in the presence of someone with great name. But God, we are in the presence of you. So we first come with an honor of humility, an honor of quietness as a respect to who you are. Thank you, Lord, for being our God and our Father. But you called us friends. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way. God, allow this fast to be the most important thing in our lives because it's about being closer to you. Show us where we need to be developed. Show us where we need to be free. God, allow the truth of the word, all the messages we've heard to be stirred up in our spirit. God, don't allow us to waste another drop of oil, another revelation that you have given us, but we ignored it. We threw it in the back seat like we do things in our car. We walk past it like we do things in our house. We put it in the closet and in the drawer like we do things in our house. But God, allow us to take heed to what you're saying, to take heed to how you're moving, to take heed to how you're speaking. Give us a sensitivity to hear you. For those who, who, who ears have been clogged by life, unclog their ears so they can hear you. Someone is crying out, Lord, that they really want to know your voice and they don't know when they're hearing you. They don't know if it's them. They don't know if it's, if it's consciousness. They don't know if it's memory. They don't know if it's program. God, make the ability to hear you with clear understanding. Let it be known to us. We don't want to be lost because we don't know that it was you. Lord, we don't want to lie on you and put your name on things that you're not saying. So make it clear to us. Cleanse us so that we can be prepared to be in your presence. Yes, God, don't let, allow us to be like the people who came to the banquet, but they were not prepared. They were not dressed and they were rejected because they was not ready for the banquet. Prepare us to be in your presence. Yes, Teach us what it takes to be in your presence. Cleanse us, dress us so we can be in your presence. As we walk in this fast, bring us closer to you. We don't want to talk to you from a distance. We want to be closer to you. We want to be like Moses who want to see your face. And God, we understand that, that no man can see your face and live. And God, we come with a mindset to die in your presence so that we can live in your presence. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you that your life requires death. We must die every day to our own will, to our own 
thoughts. So have your way. This very day, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Cleanse us from everything to try to hold us back from a great today. Close our yesterday so today can be new. You said every morning we wake up with renewed mercies. Oh God, and we bless you. Have your way with your people. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Now equip us. Oh God, give us what we need. Allow the love of God to be spread in our hearts. Allow the word of God to be spread in our hearts. We will not sin against thee. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for, for promotion. We thank you for elevation. We thank you that you're trusting us with the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you're walking with us with a greater walk with the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives to bring us and lead us and guide us into all truth. We thank you for the responsibility of the souls you have placed on our mind who we pray for and intercede for, who we'll fight for. Thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us how to join in the battle for people outside of ourselves to free them. Oh, God, give us a burden for souls. Allow us to pass the test. In the name of Jesus, have your way in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for this time. For this time. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you have made a vow over us that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord, that we have confidence that you are faithful. That whatever you started to do, you will finish the work. Oh, God, make us complete in you. Make us complete in you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We turn our days over to you. We turn our life over to you. Somebody right now may be standing in God and they feel the call. As they begin to answer, Lord, we thank you for souls being saved. Thank you for souls being delivered. We thank you for the power of God being felt like never before. I feel an increase of your power, an increase of knowing who you are, an increase of humility. Thank you, Lord, for your sovereignty. And we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Have your way in the name of Jesus. And as we start this fast, we start with you. We expect you to speak this morning. We expect for bondages to be broken. We expect for a greater walk. We expect to pick up pace. We expect to increase. We expect a, a Joseph anointing. We expect the, 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 a Jesus anointing. Greater work shall we do because we expect. You said, you said, God, that you would open up the wonders and pour our blessing. We'll have room to receive by our obedience. And we thank you, Lord. We obey. Now touch those who may be weak, who may be wounded, bring about healing. We thank you, Lord, for miracles. We thank you, Lord, for testimonies of how they have overcome from this fast. That many people shall say, my life was transformed by this fast. We thank you for it. And we bless you for it. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we move more into the fasting, you're going to build a, a, a independency of you and God's relationship. This is not about tying to Apostle Jenkins. This is not a tying to Divine Insight Ministry. This is about you growing in God. And so you'll notice that I'll, I'm going to pray less because this is about your personal walk with God that walks you into the body of Christ. So just because uh, I'm praying or I stop praying, it's not a stop for you. It is now for you. See, we're passing out equipment to show you how to build your relationship with God. At the end of the day, it's between you and the Lord. And so as we move on into fasting today, I want you to con concentrate on the 12 things that we gave that God shared over yesterday. Concentrate on the 12 th the two things that God gave for the day. And, and, and walk in that. Walk in those things. Okay? Walk in those things. And watch God begin to watch God begin to do some things. He's going to break some things for you. Okay? Very key. Very key. And so, yes. And so we'll do that. So we got five more minutes. You go ahead and keep praying. You bless God. Uh, read Psalms 91. Um, if the Lord said the same, I don't know exactly what God has for us today. Um, we do have to go to work for a couple of hours, uh, 
we may be uh, in someone else's church service at, at 11.30, so I may not be able to come back at 11.30 today. Uh, God, I feel the anointing. Um, but if I'm not, and thank you, Sister Brown. Yes, we, giving is one of the things that God wants us to do. Um, if I'm not, if I'm not in, in church service at 11.30, I will come back and begin to pray and begin to go over some things that God has revealed to me. If he's revealed anything more. Uh, to that i will be able to do that okay if i'm not in church if i'm in church then you continue on you may be in church and then we'll meet uh probably tomorrow morning i i, I believe i'm going to come on this evening about five or six i'm still praying to see what the lord is saying uh concerning that okay and so so that's what we're doing uh continue to pray write down what god is sharing with you and move into that intimate place with god and stay focused stay focused stay focused Stay focused. I hear the Lord say that. Stay focused. Stay focused. Learn how to spend time with God. Stay focused. Stay focused. Okay? And so, God bless you. We love you. Um, for many of you, and another reason is why, because many of you, it's already past 6 o'clock. Only those who are probably living under the Central Standard Time, for many of you, it's it's almost 7 o'clock. So, you've been in your fast over an hour. And so, we understand that as well. God bless everybody. Um, God bless you. We love you. Keep us in prayer. This is our second day. I'm so excited. Brother Mike, uh, please in, inbox me um, uh, from Youngstown. There's a lot of Mikes, not Mike Logan, um, not the other Michael, not Kenneth Michael, uh, but the other Michael. There's three Michaels that watches. Uh, inbox me. Let me know how you're doing on your fast, okay? If you have any struggles during your fast, call someone up, uh, text someone, get into some worship, open your Bible. Thank you, because I, I was praying. I knew God wanted me to say something else. This is what it is. Uh, the enemy tries to attack you on your second day. Uh, most of the things that you fight, okay, now it's coming back to me because I was praying. I knew the Lord wanted me to say something. Point three is this, that in in your fasting, you're going to have to realize that a lot of things you thought was the devil was your own consciousness. And the Lord said, until you overcome your own consciousness that, if, that is out of alignment with God, you haven't even ran into the devil. So a lot of things that you will, will be dealing with on day two and day three is really not battling the devil yet. You ain't got to the devil yet because you haven't got past you. See, there's a lot of things that when you are not living right and not doing right, but you still hold on to the God language, you really think that you were discerning some things, but you wasn't. And so right now in day two, and probably all the way to day seven, because there are things shifting. Like I'm going to talk about on the third day, there's going to be a shifting. Tomorrow, there's going to be a shifting. But right now, you're shifting into things that you're battling with. Even in, in fasting, you may hear your own thoughts say, man, I wish I could eat. Or, you know what, I'm getting hungry. Well, that's your own content. You got to get past you before you, can get, before you can get to the devil. Before you can even get to the devil, you got to get past you. Okay, the first level of fasting is getting past you. The second phase of fasting is getting past the devil. The third phase of fasting is hearing God completely without you being an interruption or the devil being an interruption. So that's point number three. And so you will now realize that the thing that you're battling is not the devil. It's you. Your own way of thinking about people. If things going to come up. Uh, unforgiveness. All kind of stuff can come up. That's really you. You're battling you. Okay. And so I wanted you to know that. And so I knew it was something. And so God said in the prayer. Because I knew it was something that, that he wanted me to say. And that's it. So love you. God bless you. Continue on your fast. If the Lord say the same, we'll come back uh, at 1130. If not, we'll probably come back this evening. Because uh, there's some things that I know God want me to do. And so I'll be notifying you if we come back this evening. All right. God bless you. Love you. Walk in God's favor. Enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, this is our second day in fast. And we're excited about what God is doing. So we have two scriptures. Psalm. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3 that we're reading, and Psalms 91, verses 1 that we're reading. That's, that's the two scriptures that God has given us to be able 
to pray and fast in his word as well. Love you. God bless you. Thank you for all those that are sowing into the ministry. Thank you for all those who are led by God. And I'm telling you, I'm, I have a great expectation of what God is going to do. If you have not gotten the book yet, go get the book because on the eighth day, we're going to begin the 33 confessions. And I'm telling you, God is going to do some things with us. So make sure you order that book. Um, many people have the book already. If you get the book, make sure you show me a picture of it with the book because I'm going to be sending out the music CD to the book. There is a music CD that goes along with the book. You'll be that'll be sent to you free of charge we're going to bless you with that we're sowing that into the kingdom okay and so make sure you let us know and then we'll be getting your email and your address so that we can send that to everyone else just repeat your scriptures again psalms, uh, psalms 1 chapter 1 of psalms verses 1 through 3 and then psalms 91 verse 1 those are the scriptures okay and so and so i'm, I'm also going to be starting probably in july of august a newsletter once a month you'll be receiving a newsletter in the mail that's another reason why i need your email and your address of things that god has laid on divine insight ministry is it going to be things that god has given us to the body of christ and we're going to do a newsletter and eventually it's going to go into a magazine that once a year or twice a year we're going to release that we're going to start out with the newsletter once a month and then Probably in 2020, we're going to uh, start a magazine that we do once every three months or once quarterly, and we're going to release all the different people that God has blessed. And it's, it's going to be a lot of things that God has shared with me. Okay? So we're excited about it. God bless you. It's past our six o'clock hour of starting our fast. And I uh, love you. Enjoy your day. Walk in God's favor, and I'll see you soon.